Welcome back, everyone, to the second feature match of Victory World World Cup, the first group stage. I'm here joined by Gabby Snyder uh, to kick off the second feature match. How are you doing? I'm doing pretty great. Uh, we had some really exciting battles so far. And to be honest, I really love the team, uh, the Kyogre is Ashen team that's been running around. Uh, so to see it continuing to do well makes me feel I'm, like I'm not that out of date. So that's pretty great. <laughs> yeah, definitely. And uh, I think it's a great point you bring up, uh, the Zashin Kyogre teams. A lot of teams these days seem to uh, not follow the initial format where uh, it was Zacian and another restricted form, uh, restricted Pokemon. A lot of teams just foregoing Zacian entirely, despite uh, how hyped up, to, hyped up it's been. And uh, I think this uh, next matchup is a great showcase of that, um, as we sort of see uh, the, the players um, with uh, France facing off against Mexico. Uh, on yeah. the left here, we see... Oh, sorry, go ahead. Oh, no, no, no. I was just going to say, you know, it is always interesting to keep an eye on team compositions. Um, and, you know, this is certainly no exception as uh, Toma Gravui is going to be facing off against Kristen Vargas. And as you can see, uh, both these trainers really have some great accomplishments, uh, both in the grassroots side of things and on the official side of things as well. Yes, definitely. And uh, you can see that both these players have been getting these results uh, in the year 2022. So clearly they have, uh, you know, have some experience from uh, previous formats in Tomas' case all the way from 2015 and Dublin regionals. Uh, so they have some history in the past formats, but also have some shown success um, in the current uh, format in 2022. So uh, really excited to see these really highly skilled players face off and see what kind of teams they're using. Yeah, so if we want to go ahead and take a look at the teams. Um, oh, this is also something interesting um, here. As you're right, there are no Zacian <laughs> on the field. Uh, there is a blue Gastrodon, though. So um, I'm pretty excited about that. Y'all know where my vote went in that regard. But um, in terms of archetypes, you know, this is a very interesting matchup between a Groudon and Eveltal and a Groudon and a Lunala. And, you know, looking at just the types of the restrictions involved, I would assume that Toma with the Eveltal will have an advantage. But, um, you know, Christian's team, we were just talking about this, Yuki. It's done very well in the American circuit so far. Yes, definitely. Uh, it's a team that has uh, gotten um, Joe Ugarte. Uh, top four at the recent North American International Championships, as well as Gavin Michaels, uh, a win at the uh, Vancouver Regionals. And uh, yeah, facing off with Tomas' team, which, uh, you know, looks like a familiar combination. You see a lot of these Pokemon, uh, you know, making the top cuts and, uh, you know, making their mark in the format, but not sure if I've seen them in the six together before. And Tomas, a player who's really known for their, you know, Kyogre Shedinja, uh, uh, teams. So yeah, maybe it was their effort to not get scouted out by uh, Mexico, uh, making sure that they're keeping things interesting so they can't be counter teams so easily. So yeah, uh, obviously Ivelto has the advantage over Lunala just by looking at it on their own. But uh, let's see if, uh, you know, um, Christians can make the, the reversal of the types here. Charizard and Grimmsnarl out on the lead for Christian. Reggie Alecki and Yveltal on the field for Toma. Another thing interesting to note, France has not won a single set against Mexico yet. Mexico is currently four wins in the lead. So uh, even though it's a lot of an uphill battle for them, I think Toma is in a decent situation, especially given this lead to give their team some momentum to take into the next week. Definitely a uh, really uh, crucial match to decide whether uh, Mexico will go as the winner or uh, they will be tied with France this week. Uh, Reggie Alecki in an interesting position where it's able to take advantage of having a uh, good tight matchup against Charizard, but uh, with the threat of Grout on the back, probably not able to uh, commit to a, a Max Lightning into it. So uh, curious to see if they will just be used as uh, you know a Electro Web for the speed control without Dynamax. Here's the first switch of this match, and you were absolutely right, Yuki. That is Groudon out on the field to use its ground typing to take those electrical attacks from Regieleki, but Toma not taking the bait, going to be Dynamaxing the Eveltal this turn, uh, giving himself access to two different kinds of speed control, you know, the uh, Electroweb, like you were just saying, but also access to Max Airstream as well. And given that Christian's team is probably going to be looking to Dynamax that Charizard possibly later on in the match you really need as much speed as you can get to ensure you have that advantage 
Light screen from Grimmsnarl will be the first move of this match, having the special attack damage for all Pokemon on Christian's side of the field. Thunderbolt into that ground type. Groudon won't do any damage, and Airstream into the Grimmsnarl will bring it down to just above half its health. Um, so Christian uh, definitely respecting the the Thunderbolt over from Regieleki, so uh, really smart to bring it in to take that instead of the Charizard. Uh, but on the other hand, uh, Tomaz, uh, Yvelto in a really good position. Uh, Grimstar with the Prankster ability, not able to affect uh, Dark-type Pokemon, so not able to do that much to the Yvelto, barring any kind of Spirit Break, uh, which will happen after due to the speed tiers of the Pokemon. And Groudon, also a Pokemon that gets a lot of its a utility from the max quakes that's able to do, but uh, again, unaffected by the Velto who has a flying type. So uh, interesting to see how much Christian can uh, stall out the Dynamax over from Tomaz and and uh, yeah, make his mark with his own Dynamax later. Trick from Grimmsnarl into the dark type and Cineroar will not connect. It was going into that Regilecki, but there was a switch. Max Narctus into that Groudon to do a little bit of damage and more importantly drop the special defense of both these Pokemon by one stage each. Groudon finishing up the turn with a Precipice Blade, so even though it will connect with that Incineroar, thanks to the Intimidate and the Shucka Berry, it's not going to do much damage at all. Yes, so uh, Toman not n thinking he'd need a Max Airstream in the rest of this game and get the, uh, like you said, the crucial uh, special defense drop on Groudon. Groudon Pokemon typically known to have the Assault Vest item to uh, raise its uh, normally not so high special defensive stat. Uh, so the Max Darkness, uh, a better move over the Max Airstream in this case, and uh, Instanor coming in to block the trick. So excellent turn from Tama. Groudon leaving the field, uh, not wanting to take any more damage, especially now that its special defense has been dropped a stage. Incineroar coming out with that Intimidate. Uh, a pretty good switch here from Christian. I think recognizing that given Toma is saving that Regieleki for later on in the match, that ground typing is going to be really helpful in the future. Max Airstream almost enough to knock out that Grimmsnarl, but unfortunately it is able to hold on for one more attack. A Flare Blitz from that Incineroar boosted by the sun will actually knock out the Grimmsnarl. So very smart targeting from Toma there. Uh, it was looking like that Flare Blitz might have gone into that Groudon spot, but uh, by targeting the Grimmsnarl, even though it was, uh, you know, it didn't need to do that much damage, you don't take much damage in recoil either, which is great positioning. Uh, Christian will take this opportunity to send in the Charizard, and now that Dynamax is over for Toma, I think it might be time for Christian to get his own Gigantamax going. Yes, definitely, and uh, I think we talked about how uh, Toma initially in a way better position, having Yveltal be the Dynamax Pokemon, where, uh, you know, Pokemon like Incineroar, Grimmsnarl, Groudon, not having that favorable of a matchup against it, but now that Christian is able to, uh, you know, stall out that Dynamax uh, with, you know, now that it has less powerful moves, not as much bulk with the Dynamax factor, uh, Charizard coming in uh, with the Solar Power ability, uh, really ready to wreak havoc over onto Tomas' side, and we'll be seeing if Tomas is able to uh, withstand uh, three turns of Charizard's Gigantamax. It's going to be a tall ask for Eveltal. You know, it's not the bulkiest Pokemon out there, but it does get access to Oblivion Wing, which could help keep its health up, assuming it can take even one of these G-Max wildfires as that is going to be the Charizard's fire move of choice thanks to its Gigantamax form. Uh, it, it's arguably one of the most centralizing Gigantamax Pokemon in the metagame right now. And Eveltal won't even have an opportunity to attack this turn thanks to the fake out from Christian's Incineroar. Gmax Wildfire does indeed connect with the Eveltal and it's a one hit knockout. Also setting up the fire on the field for some residual damage later on against Pokemon like that Regieleki. Uh, Incineroar going for a parting shot to drop that Charizard's special attack and attack by one stage each, giving Toma the opportunity to pivot, but it's tough to say if that Regieleki is honestly going to be enough to take down that Charizard when it's in that large Gigantamax form. Yes, uh, the Charizard, uh, again, even in the G uh, Gigantamax form, uh, not typically able to withstand really powerful attacks by Regieleki, and given how Christian uh, really confidently uh, switched it in and uh, Gigantamaxed, uh, knowing that the Regieleki would be in the back for Toma, 
Uh, might be indicating that I might have the Walken Berry, uh, especially since we didn't see uh, any kind of life orb recoil from that attack. And yeah, combined with the Incineroar's Fake Out to uh, protect against any potential Snarls coming out from the Veltal and being able to KO it without any sort of, uh, yeah, um, supporting moves like that, uh, still in a great spot if that Walken Berry is there. The other interesting thing that I feel like we should note is that, you know, we are watching from Tomas' perspective, and it looks like Regieleki has Eerie Impulse, which is a tech that you don't see too often on that fast, bouncy Pokemon. But the Groudon doesn't have Protect as well, which means it will be taking some damage from the G-Max Wildfire, but given that Charizard's now at minus three special attack, it really doesn't do much at all, even with the boost from the sun. But Flare Blitz with the critical hit is more than enough to deal the rest of that damage to Groudon, so Toma buying himself some time with that eerie impulse to try and let Groudon sweep, but unfortunately just went down to the crit at the end of the day. Yeah, absolutely game-changing moment there uh, for Christian. Uh, Reggie Lecky looking like it's going to uh, be able to, you know, help preserve Groudon for the turn, but only able to reduce Charizard's special attack, not able to uh, reduce Incineroar's uh, attack of Flare Blitz boosted by the sun, and this Intimidate from uh, Tomas last Incineroar coming in a little bit too late, and yeah, we might be seeing this Charizard uh, overpowering the last two Pokemon Tomas, and despite having three stages of special attack dropped. Yeah, if Christian wanted to here, he could also possibly just switch in that Groudon in the back of his party as well to restore the sun and allow Charizard to deal some really big damage this turn. Uh, no switch, instead Thunderbolt into that Charizard. It's able to hold on uh, with about 10-15% of its health left, and G-Max Wildfire is the move of choice into that Regieleki. Barely misses the knockout, but the residual damage in between turns should be enough to pick up that KO. And uh, Christian does end up going for the pivot, but not at the beginning of the turn. Instead, using Parting Shot to drop Incineroars on Tomas' side of the field, attack by one stage. Um, and overall weakening the amount of damage this attack is going to do into the Groudon. Uh, so... You know, a great spot for Christian uh, will have the Pokemon advantage by far by the end of this turn. And uh, unless this Incineroar on Tomas' side of the field has any secrets or any critical hits itself waiting for that Groudon, I, it got, he got the crit. So I guess it's not move. quite over yet, uh, but it's going to be a uphill battle for sure. <laughs> yes, and uh, like you just mentioned, the Regilecki going down from the wildfire damage, so it's going to be a uh, what we thought would be a 1v3, but a 1v2 with that big critical hit from Incineroar. So uh, playing a little bit of copycat with Christian's Incineroar earlier, but I believe that uh, you know Christian's Incineroar was able to make that play a little bit more timely and uh, help him get the uh, the game one win here. Yeah, I think the best thing Tama can hope for at this point in time is you play out this turn, um, hope you don't get flinched, or if you do get flinched, Charizard reveals a move that it has other than presumably Flamethrower or Fire Blast, or Blast Burn even. Um, if Charizard has something like a Rock-type move, maybe Ancient Power, uh, that would be great information going into game two. But Christian, uh, knowing that he has the win locked down uh, just a couple of turns from now, op opting for Blast Burn, and it looks like it'll be Incineroar versus Incineroar to play out the rest of this game, which, I mean, this this is a little bit risky, right? Like, I, I, I'm pretty sure that Christian uh, wins this at this point in time, but uh, it really is coming down to the wire here. Yes, definitely. A little bit closer than we had first thought, but uh, with uh, Christians and Sinor getting that max airstream boost a couple turns ago, coming to shine here so that there's no opportunity for Tomas and Sinor to go for a flare blitz and maybe get the third critical hit of the game. Yeah, so Christian taking game one here, putting Mexico up by one game against France. Again, Mexico has won every single set against France so far, and uh, Toma probably looking to at least take a game off them, possibly two to win this set, but uh, it felt like he had all the momentum on, on his side of the field. It was just he wasn't able to really deal the damage going throughout that game. Yeah, it seems like uh, Toma... Uh, wasn't able to fully utilize uh, Yveltal's max turns. Um, you know, it seems that Yveltal, you know, combined with how the other restricted Pokemon um, on Christian's end is Lunala, 
Uh, Evelto, a really, really strong candidate for the Dynamax uh, in this game, but just wasn't able to get the knockouts, wasn't able to get the momentum needed in the first game. Um, so I would like, we'd like to see him, uh, you know, use the Reggie Lecky to sort of, uh, you know, power down the, the Charizard, make them switch or protect a little bit more, and not let them uh, max after the Veltal uh, to sort of steal the game like that. So, yeah, excited to see how Tomorrow will be adjusting in this game, too. Yeah, I think the other thing you have to keep in mind is, uh, you know, by leading Reggie Alecki, I think that you give yourself a lot of momentum. But when you're facing off against a Groudon user who keeps the Groudon in the back of the party, uh, it's just not a good lead at that point because you end up switching it out. And especially knowing that this Reggie Alecki doesn't have Bolt Switch, you can't even do damage on the way out. But going into game two, we have a very similar situation for game one for Toma, leading that Reggie Alecki and Eveltal combination once again against Christians in Cinema roar and grim snarl pretty interesting um leads from both sides in the sense that christian was the one who won the g first game so usually they're the ones who can stick to their leads and uh, toma who lost that game makes the adjustment but the exact opposite happens where reggie lecky Veltal is still going to be toma's lead for game two whereas christian switches it up uh bring in the incinero over the grim snarl uh, anticipating potentially Tama uh, to lead with the Reggie Lecky again and not wanting the Charizard to be a liability. Yeah, and I, I really do like this lead from Christian because it does give him a lot of flexibility. You know, Grimmsnarl can set up a screen, Grimmsnarl can uh, try and do a little bit of damage if it does have an attacking move, and that Incineroar can pivot right out to give Christian the advantage. But Tama already making an adjustment in his play style for this game too, going to be switching out the Reggie Alecki this time for the Groudon. So uh, Groudon will not be intimidated, nor will it be scared of that light screen coming up from the Grimmsnarl, and a taunt will ensure that the Grimmsnarl cannot use any other supportive moves for the next couple of turns. Incineroar's parting shot will lower the special attack of the Veltal by one stage, but this Groudon's in a pretty great position. It's not been intimidated, there's no reflect up on the field in order to reduce its damage, and Christian is forced to either send in his own Groudon or the Charizard at this point in time uh, which Toma can go ahead and try and use some airstreams of his own in order to get a speed advantage yeah I think we uh, you know we're praising Christian earlier for the uh, adjustment and leads for this game too but Toma uh, showing his adjustment in terms of play instead of the lead uh, bringing that grout on who's in a better spot like you mentioned and Eveltal not going for the Dynamax from straight away like in game one, but uh, using that taunt, which is a bit more of an unconventional move for Eveltal, uh, usually having the Assault Vest item with, you know, only attacks uh, and uh, a Life Orb, which usually it can only have Protect uh, as, the, uh, as the fourth move. So uh, really interesting reveal here. And now that Grimmsnarl is a little bit dead in weight, uh, barring any sort of Spirit Break that I'm able to do on the Eveltal. Uh, so definitely a better start for Tama. Another switch. This time it will be that Charizard switching out and the Incineroar coming right back in. Almost a necessity given that the Charizard is in a rough position staring down both the Groudon and the Eveltal from Toma. Uh, Toma also sent switching out that Eveltal for their own Incineroar, going to bring that Intimidate onto the field as well. And, you know, we did see Toma lock in his move choice, and it looks like he did decide to go for the, Dyna the Dynamax, but this time on the Groudon instead of the Eveltal. So I'm curious how this is going to change his game plan, knowing that uh, he's really opted out of speed control, barring the Electroweb against uh, at this point in time. Certainly no speed control, and I think Christian might have uh, gone for a bait here by bringing that Charizard a little preemptively, as, uh, signaling that he's going to uh, Gigantamax, and uh, instead Christian uh, bringing it back to the Incineroar to take this Rockfall uh, way more comfortably than the Charizard, and we might be seeing a bit of a repeat from Game 1 where Tama uh, gets his Dynamax out early, uh, and might not be able to get the momentum that he wants, and Christian uh, then Dynamaxing uh, or Gigantamaxing Charizard a little bit later uh, once Toma doesn't have uh, his own Dynamax to uh, fend it off. 
Yeah, the, the nice thing about this Groudon is that it does have access to Max Quake, which will help boost the special defense, so hopefully these Pokemon can take a G-Max Wildfire, assuming that Tvama doesn't want to uh, switch them around too, too much at this point in time. Uh, but still, a huge difference in play for approach from Thomas in this uh, Tomaha in this game too, and I'm really curious to see if it's going to pay off for him. On the other hand, uh, like you said, the Max Quake would be instrumental for Tama to be able to fend off the the, the wildfires coming out from uh, Christian's Charizard, presumably later in the game. But uh, a, a move hard to pick right now, uh, knowing that the Charizard in the back might be able to take. Uh, the Max Quake on the behalf of either of these Pokemon, so uh, definitely not a great position yet for Tama. Not yet. There is a switch, but it's going to be the Grim Snarl into the Groudon. So that Grim Snarl, having been taunted, only having access to Spirit Break in terms of damage, not going to be doing too much against these two Pokemon. And a second switch as well. This Incineroar just naturally outspeeding Tomas Groudon and getting that parting shot. So some more great information for these two trainers. Uh, possibly indicating that Christian is running a bit of a speedier Incineroar uh, relative to the Groudon on Tomas' side of the field. Uh, but no Charizard! It's going to be that Grimmsnarl coming in just in time to take this Max Quake. And oh, actually, Max Quake targeting the Groudon. So finds the right target, but you can just see how much those attack drops have added up over these past few turns. Uh, we'll get the special defense boost. Incineroar as well going for its own. Yes, and shot. now we see a parting shot come out. Uh, over from Tomas and uh, into the Grimmsnarl, and uh, we'll see what he uh, pivots into here um, as we head into the last turn of uh, Granon's Dynamax. Eveltal is that Pokemon of choice, uh, which is going to... It's certainly going to be a Pokemon that'll, that'll stick around for a while, but I am really curious if Tomas is going to be able to find the positioning that he wants against these Pokemon. You know, we know that Grimmsnarl has the Spirit Break, uh, so that's going to be dealing some super effective damage. It'll also be dropping Eveltal's special attack as well, so uh, may not be may not be the alignment that Tomas is looking for right now. Certainly, like you said, and uh, yeah, we'll see if Groudon will be able to get a knockout on this last turn of Max, uh, at least get a, a Max Quake off so that uh, it can deal with the wildfire damage better from Charizard and uh, use a Rock-type move in a retaliation later. It's a revolving door of Pokemon as an Incineroar once again takes the field to intimidate a Groudon. If y'all aren't sick of this yet, then you haven't been watching enough VGC12, I think. <laughs> It is one of the most consistent plays, and uh, Christian also going to be mixing things up with their Dynamax strategy right now, going for the Dynamax on their Groudon as well. So Charizard officially locked out of uh, Gigantamax at this point in time, and instead it's going to be these two Groudon facing each other down. Yes, with Christian a bit of an advantage, uh, having um, three more turns of Max left, uh, definitely interesting to see that the Groudon is choosing the Dynamax instead of the uh, Charizard, like in game one, uh, but potentially feeling the Groudon's a bit more threatened and wanting to get rid of this Incineroar a bit earlier. Max Rockfall into Tomas Incineroar will bring down its health. There's also a Reflect up on the field for Christian, so this poor Groudon on Tomas' side of the field hardly going to be doing any damage. These special defense boosts aren't going to come in handy now that we know the Charizard will be remaining a lot smaller, relatively speaking. I think he's at the point in this game where he's going to have to switch that Groudon out to get rid of all those debuffs. Otherwise, it's just going to be KO'd easily by Christian. Yeah, great point here. Uh, by the other hand, if Toma retreats their Groudon and brings it back in, Later in the game, then the Charizard, despite not having it, uh, being in the Gigantamax form, will still be able to dish out a lot of damage with the Blast Burn, Powered by Sun, and the Solar Power ability. So, uh, yeah, it's still a tight spot. Uh, not super straightforward whether Tamal will want to uh, switch it out. But, uh, yeah, we'll see what he does here. Eveltal taking the field once again, going to avoid any ground type attacks from this Groudon this turn on its second turn of Dynamax. 
and Groudon not falling for it, going once again for that max rock fall into the Incineroar for the knockout. So Tama no longer able to pivot as easily, which I think is an important thing to call out when you look at how this matchup has played out. Uh, we've seen these trainers uh, switch around so much to try and take advantage, and the fact that uh, Toma is going to have to cycle between Eveltal, Groudon, and Regieleki for the remainder of the match is certainly going to hurt him. Spirit Break from that Grimmsnarl into the Eveltal to drop its special attack by one stage as well. Yeah, we can really see Christian here um, expecting the Eveltal switching in from the back, uh, seeing how they uh, rock falled into the Incineroar, as well as uh, using the Spirit Break when the Eveltal wasn't already on the field. So. Uh, really respecting that the uh, Eveltal is a threat uh, now that the Charizard is not the uh, Dynamax move choice on Christian's end. And paying off, seeing the Spear Break go in, getting the damage, but also the special attack drops, which is uh, uh, just as important. Yeah, the other thing I want to wonder about a little bit is whether or not a Precipice Blades, like how much damage is that going to do at this point, given that the Grimmsnarl has set up Reflect and presumably it's going to be active for the remainder of this game. You know, most Grimmsnarl are holding Light Clay at this point in time, uh, though I guess we did see Grimmsnarl go for Trick earlier, so it's possible that it's only going to be uh, five turns, which if Toma recognizes that, that could be an out that comes in handy later on in this game. Max Rockfall from the Groudon on the opposing side of the... Field. We'll target that Eveltal, but thanks to an Oblivion Wing, Eveltal has enough health to hold on throughout that attack. Uh, Groudon's Max Rockfall will also be taking the Sun once, away once again away from the field. Precipice Blades is also enough to knock out that Grimmsnarl this turn. Uh, does a little bit of damage to the opposing Groudon, uh, but more importantly, I think removing that Grimmsnarl means that Christian as well is slowly losing his ability to pivot. You see the Incineroar come in from Christian's end, and it's a 3v3 situation, but I think Christian is a bit more uh, favored in the sense that uh, Toma, I think both players are going to struggle to uh, take down uh, each other's Groudons uh, with the Intimidates and the Max Quakes to boost um, their uh, their defensive abil uh, defensive stats. Um, Toma's end uh, has a Regieleki, so uh, that's one Pokemon that really can't participate in taking down the opposing Groudon. So uh, I think Toma has one less Pokemon to deal with uh, Christian's Groudon, uh, whereas uh, Christian has Incineroar, Groudon, and Charizard, uh, all capable of dishing out a good amount of damage uh, to Toma's Groudon. Yeah, I'm curious if we'll try and see Toma uh, just hold on to these two Pokemon as long as possible on the field. Uh, and with that Protect on the Eveltal, dodging the Stone Edge from the Groudon on Christian's side of the field. You know, we did see that Incineroar use Fake Out to stop Toma's Groudon from attacking this turn, but Christian uh, losing a critical opportunity here, I think, to go for damage. And as a result, if Toma is able to pick, force a Knockout on the Incineroar this turn, this could be his opportunity to come back and force a Game 3. Definitely. And the Incineroar on Christian's end... Uh... Noticing that the uh, Groudon on Tomaza and can dish out a lot more damage. And on the other hand, uh, Christian noticing that Eveltal is one uh, Stone Edge away from being knocked out. So prioritizing that and uh, predicting with the Protect. Precipice Blades does eventually connect with that Groudon. Uh, it doesn't really do much damage. And the Reflect is now officially off the field. So uh, a, a great opportunity for that Charizard to switch in effectively undamaged, but does not have the weather that he was hoping for. And Charizard, uh, with no max airstream boost from Eveltal, able to outspeed it and uh, dish out a lot of damage here. And uh, perhaps with the Incineroar coming in from Christian's end, might be able to uh, survive a Stone Edge, but... Mm, probably not likely. So interesting to see if Charizard will, uh, you know, go for the knockout here on the Veltal slot, or uh, you know, be using it as bait, kind of like earlier in the game, and protect it. I also think that a lot of this strategy here depends on what moves that Christian has on that Charizard. We've only seen the reveal of some presumably flying type move and the Blast Burn. 
Uh, so if Charizard has access to, let's say, Scorched Sands rather than a uh, Ancient Power, then that could be a interesting move to reveal here as well. But instead, Protect on both the Charizard and the Eveltal this turn. Uh, Christian waiting to have Fake Out to support that Charizard prior to going for an attack as uh, it looks like it's going to be tough for that Charizard to hold on. Uh, through a Stone Edge, especially considering that this Charizard isn't taking damage from Sand. Excellent turn from Christian. Uh, noticing, uh, like you said earlier, how centralizing Charizard in the, is in this format. Um, assuming that Toma would try to take it down this turn while uh, not wanting to take any damage from it. So protecting the Eveltal and attacking with Stone Edge, perfectly cut off guard with the Christian of Incineroar, with the Intimidate, but more importantly, the fake out pressure this turn. So a pretty safe turn for Christian to be able to uh, fake out the Groudon while attacking the Veltal. And yeah, it'll be interesting to see if there's any ancient powers coming out so that there's no recoil from the Blast Burn. Reggie Alecki out on the field for that Eveltal as Incineroar goes for the fake out on Groudon, knowing that Groudon would most likely be targeting another Stone Edge this turn. Uh, Heat Wave is the next attack for this Charizard. So two fire type moves protect and an air slash. I think we know everything this Charizard can do, which means it's really going to struggle against this Groudon without the solar power help. Definitely, and with the Groudon, with the amount of health that it has, and presumably having the Assault Vest item, uh, can certainly withstand an attack from a Charizard not in the sun. So uh, as much as we thought that Christian might have been in the driver's seat for most of this game, uh, Tama uh, really uh, cleverly preserving, preserving the health of Groudon while applying some pressure, and now uh, Charizard just might not be able to uh, get enough knockouts uh, before being knocked out in return. Yeah, the other interesting thing here that Toma could consider doing is you keep the Regieleki on the field and you target that Incineroar. Um, if your opponent switches out the Groudon, as we did see Christian go for, you still are able to deal damage. If the opponent switches out the Incineroar, then your Groudon can actually uh, try and pick up the knockout there. But instead, Toma also switching out the Groudon into the Eveltal. So it's just going to be the Regieleki and the Incineroar attacking this turn. And with Regieleki's Electro Web, that should do enough damage to knock out that Incineroar. So Toma. Forcing this to a 3v2 situation. Reggie Alecki still hanging around with a ton of health. We have that Eveltal as well, able to heal up with Oblivion Wing. Um, it looks like Toma might have found the opportunity to force a game three. Definitely. And uh, yeah, uh, I think uh, Toma able to make the perfect uh, positioning so that the Reggie Alecki is able to hold down the Charizard while uh, the Eveltal has, uh, you know, the Groudon is chipped enough so that the Eveltal can take care of it. So. Uh, yeah, excellent positioning from Tama. Uh, one of those moments where throughout the game, you don't really see uh, what the end game is going to look like. Uh, despite all the damage that Tama was sort of taking in the interim, uh, it seems like he was able to get into the, the end game that he wanted. So seems like we'll be seeing a game three. I find it interesting that Tama was able to navigate to this end game as well, given that he was forced to stop switching a lot earlier than Christian due to the loss of his Incineroar. You know, I almost think like that was an advantage for him because he wasn't able to switch. He was forced to stay on the field and deal damage. And as a result, uh, he was able to find himself into the situation. Charizard will start this turn off with a protect, so it won't be knocked out by this Thunderbolt, giving Groudon the opportunity to try and pick up that knockout. But Dark Pulse into the Groudon will do more than enough damage. Uh, we also do see that three minute warning pop up, so not going to be relevant for this game, but could be an interesting thing for these trainers to keep in mind as timer could yet be yet another win condition that they aim for going into game three. A lot different game from game one where it seemed like it, it went a lot faster and the, the, the trajectory of the game was a little bit more linear. Uh, we saw Toma, uh, Dynamaxi Veltel immediately, uh, Christian pivoting around to uh, stall it out and then immediately uh, Gigantamaxing the Charizard right after to uh, to sweep through uh, the rest of Tomas' team. But in this case, uh, we saw the timer come up at the very end uh, due to the amount of pivoting that happened and the uh, Dynamax being a bit more delayed and uh, neither player's Dynamax uh, making their mark enough to close out the game. So Tama being able to capitalize on that and yeah, end up in this Eveltal Regieleki endgame. So uh, really excellent playing by Tama. 
being able to see through not just turn by turn, but also the ultimate, uh, you know, end plan that he wanted to go for. So interesting to see if Christian will be able to see through that and uh, adjust appropriately for the third game. Yeah, it's tough to say, you know, looking at the Pokemon that Christian has on his team, I don't think it's necessarily possible for him to make a Pokemon adjustment that'll give him an advantage. You know, we haven't seen that Lunala from him, but on the other hand, I don't think you bring Lunala in a Incineroar Eveltal matchup, especially knowing that what we do, uh, that the Incineroar has access to Throat Chop as well. Uh, so that Pokemon's really going to struggle. And as a result, you're really down to just the four Pokemon that we've seen, unless you maybe send in Venusaur and try and sleep powder. But then even then, I think that Toma has ways around that. So I, I personally think the best adjustment for Christian would be to go back to what he did in game one, you know, try and get a lot of damage down on this Regieleki early, if at all possible. Uh, but it's really going to be up to Tama in, in that regard to keep that Regieleki safe and keep his win condition around for the late game. Yeah, we saw the Regieleki was able to just knock out the Charizard in one hit um, and really just not able to get any mileage out of that Pokemon when we saw it uh, really just sweep through Tama in the first game. So uh, interesting to see if Christian will go back to that uh, previous strategy. But we see the leads come out, and it's in and Grimstar again. Uh, whereas uh, Tama comes with the Eveltal and Incineroar, leaving the Regieleki in the back or uh, not bringing it out at all. I think that's the great adjustment for Tama because if you don't even reveal Regieleki to your opponent, uh, they have to keep guessing whether or not you brought it. I, I would assume for the time being that Tama did opt to bring it into this matchup, but uh, still, keeping it safe in the back is really important and again, denies Christian the win condition that he found in that game one. Uh, the other interesting thing to note about this lead is that not only do you get the uh, taunt down on the opposing Incineroar immediately, uh, you also really stop what the Grimmsnarl can do. It can set up a screen. Again, we've seen it use Light Screen and Reflect, uh, but it's not going to be able to use Trick to pull whatever shenanigans it wants to do with that. Uh, and even if it does go for a Spirit Break, as long as you don't commit Dynamax to that Eveltal, uh, you can always switch around and easily uh, drop that debuff. Yeah, we see Grimstone go for the light screen here, not able to touch the Eveltal uh, thanks to that dark typing, and potentially uh, predicting a uh, parting shot coming from the Incineroar, which is exactly what happens. Great adjustment from Toma, uh, sort of taking the best of both worlds from his leads in the first two games, where the Eveltal was really uh, helping Christian not get enough uh, utility out of his support Pokemon in Incineroar and Grimmsnarl, uh, whereas the Regieleki was, uh, you know, really not super useful unless. Uh, Christian brought his Charizard, but uh, seeing how, yeah, uh, Christian might not bring his uh, Charizard immediately with the threat of Regieleki, uh, astutely bringing the Incineroar instead, pivoting out to the Groudon, and now he's in a great spot, especially after the taunt into the Incineroar. Yeah, and now it's really up to him to decide how he wants to play through the remainder of this game. You know, he could Dynamax either of these two Pokemon. He could opt for some speed control here. He could opt for uh, just going for consistent damage. Uh, it looks like Christian will be switching out that Incineroar finally, forced to manually switch it as Parting Shot is no longer available to him. And uh, Toma will reveal his Dynamax Pokemon of choice, but it's going to be that Eveltal once again. So... Uh, going back to a strategy that we saw earlier on in game, uh, it's tough to say how much having the Dynamax on that Groudon really benefited him in game two, but uh, knowing that it made it so much harder for Groudon to switch around and drop Intimidates and the like uh, probably will be a little bit easier for Toma to navigate at least. Reflect is also up on the field now thanks to Grimmsnarl, and that Dark Pulse will deal a little bit of damage to that Groudon. Um, but I think more importantly, dropping the special defense of these two Pokemon by one stage each. And Tomas Groudon will be going for a Precipice Blades, which does find its mark on both targets. But thanks to that Reflect, again, there's just not much damage uh, possibility for Toma right now. Yeah, Toma uh, really uh, predicting the Incineroar to switch manually, not be able to use as parting shot, and probably not wanting to go for a Flare Blitz here. Uh, so excellent for him to go for the Max Darkness to get more damage on Groudon rather than the Max Airstream. On the other hand, Grimmsnarl uh, really getting a lot of its value, getting both screens up. And now that the Veltal has Dynamaxed, uh, not wanting to take a Spirit Break, so uh, you know, with Grimmsnarl not taking too much damage yet, probably going to be able to get its Spirit Break off onto the Veltal. And yeah, it's not looking good for Tama after his Dynamax is over. 
Frick finally revealing the item on that Grimmsnarl, but I think we all know it is an Iron Ball, or it could have been a Lagging Tail, but in this case it is Iron Ball. Uh, Airstream from Eveltal will be boosting the speed of these two Pokemon by one stage each, but thanks to that Iron Ball, it's really not going to do too much in the grand scheme of things, ensuring that this Incineroar actually does not outspeed the Groudon. So that's, again, interesting things to note here as we play through this endgame. Prestus Blades does connect with the two Pokemon on Christian's side of the field. And, uh, yeah, just slowly, slowly trying to figure out what these win cons are for these trainers. Not sure if it was intentional, but uh, Christian's Grimmsnarl is, like, surviving by a sliver of health, uh, definitely in, by assistance of the Salt Vest that it took from Groudon. And, yeah, even though it can't really use its support moves anymore, it's basically done with this job, uh, setting up both screens, getting the trick onto the Groudon so that it can't outspeed Christian's own Groudon. And now it can still threaten the Spear Breaks onto Veltal, so it still needs to uh, be taken care of this turn. So, yeah, really big props to Christian for getting the most utility out of his Grim Snarl. Airstream putting that Incineroar within Precipice Blade's range, but I think the big question here is who will go first and will it actually connect with its targets? Uh, Parting Shot this time will outspeed as it does take a bit for Iron Ball to apply. Uh, will drop the special attack and attack by that Eveltal one stage each and give Christian the opportunity to send in either his own Groudon or possibly that last Pokemon. Uh, it's going to be that Groudon taking the field and uh, just in time to take a Prestus Blades, which again doesn't do much damage but will stop the Grimmsnarl from attacking this turn. Mod Groudon an absolute roll this game, hitting all six Prestus Blades, uh, which is not a move that is uh, notorious for being 100% accurate. Uh, but I don't sure Christian minds too much as he's able to bring his Charizard in pretty safely and still having the sun up, still backed by both screens and with Groudon uh, no longer having the Assault Vest item that will uh, let it survive the, the, the wildfires coming out from Charizard. So uh, yeah, Christian really uh, setting up for this endgame very well. And now we'll see if Toma is able to uh, yeah withstand these next three turns. Uh, from the Charizard and, uh, you know, weaken it throughout the process with parting shots or snarls um, if he has access to it um, to, yeah, get through the, these three turns. I'm trying to think of if there's another uh, win condition here for Toma, as you are absolutely right that Christian really has his choice of uh, strategy, even though he is at the Pokemon disadvantage at, at this point in time. You know, knowing that the Grim Snarl's uh, screens that it's set up are not going to be, uh, are not going to have the additional turn duration that a Light Clay gives them, uh, could be an out for Toma. Uh, just try and protect your Pokemon, stall out the screens, and then let Regieleki come in to try and clean up. Um, but that would also assume that you're able to knock out the Groudon on Christian's side of the field prior to that happening, which uh, could happen as a Tomazi Beltal does have the speed advantage and will be going for a second Dark Pulse into that Groudon, but it just is not doing any damage at this point in time. GMAX Wildfire is an easy one-hit knockout to that Groudon now that it no longer is holding the Assault Vest, and that residual Fire-type damage will certainly be very helpful for Christian as well. Possibly not even needing it after Stone Edge does connect with that Eveltal for some super effective damage. Yeah, really big turn for Christian, uh, taking out uh, one big threat to the, um, the the Charizard and lots of damage on the Eveltal, uh, certainly in range uh, from the next attack coming out from Groudon. And Regilecki coming in here uh, to potentially spread some eerie impulses uh, certainly not able to get a knockout on the Charizard, barring any critical hits, thanks to the light screens that uh, Christian set up earlier. So, uh, still in a great spot. Um, yeah, uh, if the Veltal is able to get uh, the Dark Pulse off onto the Groudon before it gets knocked out, uh, that would be ideal, but uh, we'll see if Christian allows that. Yeah, honestly, you might even just go for a max guard here on the Charizard this turn to just try and give yourself the uh, best opportunity of dealing with this Regilecki, but uh, Groudon actually switching out and that Incineroar taking its spot on the field. Uh, this Intimidate not really going to do much here, but possibly having this Incineroar around for fake out next turn is exactly the out that Christian is looking for. Max guard on the Charizard. Ivelto going for Oblivion Wing this time into that Incineroar, which... 
is enough to pick up that knockout. So no fake out access, uh, Christian. Uh, trying to go for it. It's possible that the Groudon would have been able to take that Oblivion Wing, but it's a tough call. And uh, Reggie Alecki's Thunderbolt just not connecting with that protecting Charizard. Christian predicting uh, Tama to go for the Dark Pulse again into the Groudon, seeing how much little damage it did in the previous turn, uh, thinking the Oblivion Wing might not knock it out, and bringing the Incineroar to take it instead, but uh, instead, uh, the Oblivion Wing being the move of choice, knocking out the Incineroar, not providing the opportunity for Christian to go for an easy fake out and max move. So definitely not in the uh, spot that Christian wanted to be in, but still not in out of the game by any means. Uh, again, the uh, thanks to the light screen, the Reggie Lucky and the Velto probably not able to take out uh, the Charizard, even if it gets focused down. So. Uh, especially with the Groudon coming in to uh, bring in the sun, the solar power activate and be able to take out knockouts even with uh, an ear impulse should it come out from the Reggie Lucky. Yeah, I also, I can't help but wonder though um, if it's even worth trying to go for an eerie impulse at this point in time. You know, we've seen how much damage Thunderbolt did to that Charizard in game two and knowing that Ivaltel has the opportunity to go for one last attack Maybe you just double up into that Charizard. You know that there isn't going to be a second max guard this turn. And if you're able to get the knockout on the Charizard, then hopefully you can try and knock out the Groudon later. But at the same time, if you do focus too much in on the Groudon and Christian's able to knock out Eveltal, then Groudon just wins as this Regieleki has no uh, non-electric type attacking moves. So it's a very uh, precarious situation for Toma, opting to go for Oblivion Wing to secure the knockout on Oh no, just missing the knockout Hi. on that Groudon. It's able to hold on with what appears to be just one HP. Thunderbolt into the Charizard to bring it down into the yellow. Um, Charizard and Groudon now have the opportunity to go for some massive damage. GMAX qualifier for the knockout into Regieleki. And as long as this Groudon is able to connect a single attack to this Eveltal, Christian will win this game for Mexico, putting them up five to zero against France in this week. Yeah, absolutely phenomenal play from Christian. Uh, perhaps in the end, Tama could have considered uh, targeting down the Charizard, maybe even fishing for a critical hit between the two attacks, knowing that uh, if it's just going to be the Groudon left uh, versus the Incineroar and the Inveltal, for example, uh, would be able to have a, a fighting chance, but. Yeah, now it's just one Incineroar facing down the uh, Groudon Charizard, three Pokemon they are not really wanting to uh, face down, typically. No, I, I mean, again, it, it's always possible with such low health that the Incineroar finds a way to take it. You go for Fake Out against the Groudon, um, and then as long as Charizard really doesn't take any recoil damage. I, I guess the big question here is whether or not... Um, given that the Incineroar is indeed at full health, which is something that I wasn't really expecting at this point in the game, uh, whether or not two air slashes from that Charizard will be enough to pick up the knockout onto the Incineroar, as that would be Charizard's best move uh, in order to deal damage. Alternatively, you could go for its Hurricane. Oh, well, that changes things. Uh, gets the confusion against Incineroar. And Solar Power leaves Charizard with just enough attack to health to go for one more turn. So I, I guess you go for Blast Burn at this point because you don't want to risk the move missing. Um, and worst case scenario, you have that confusion to help out as well. Definitely. And uh, we're not sure how much turn huh. Stun Power has left. Solar Power is going to be active with the Sun. But this might be the last turn no matter what. So we'll see if this Blast Burn is going to be enough to take... Mexico to a 5-0 victory, and it seems it is. Yeah, so a bit of a a bit of a earlier or, or later win than I was expecting in this matchup, but Charizard's still able to clean things up. Uh, knowing that its flying type move of choice was Hurricane at the end really uh, did put Christian's win condition as jeopardy, as it's not that accurate in the sun at all. Had that move missed, I think the Incineroar with a Flare Blitz would have been easily able to knock out that Charizard from that point in time. So very well played from both these trainers. It did come down absolutely to the wire, but uh, Groudon and Charizard just showing why they're one of the more consistent pairs of Pokemon found throughout Series 12. Yeah, a lot of adjustment from both ends. I mean, just the true joy of watching best of three is to see how players read into each other's minds, uh, how they use the information they're given to 
uh, change their their strategies. And you can see that happen uh, from Christian's end in the beginning, uh, you know, having a pretty commanding uh, victory in game one with Charizard, trying to change it up in game two with the Groudon uh, Dynamax, but noticing that's not really going to be enough for him to win. So in game three, goes back to his initial, um, you know, game plan in game one of using Charizard, but uh, doing an even better job of it, in my opinion, uh, having the light screen set up uh, you know, using instant or fake outs a lot more effectively. Um, so yeah, really, really phenomenal play from both ends and a lot closer in the end than we had initially thought. But yeah, uh, Christian comes out on top and uh, gives Mexico the win for their week, uh, which is, yeah, quite the upset. Yeah. All right. So that was one round of Pokemon today. We still got two more for you coming up. So please stay tuned. This is the Victory Road World Cup sponsored by Elgato, GG Tour, and Medify.